Sponsored by the Mike Morris Law Firm, 855 Mike Wings. Jason Carlyle starts now. Good Monday morning to you. Glad you're with us here in downtown Detroit with the sun shining outside the local four studios. This is the digital enclave within this television station, and we call it the 915-ish. Also, Jason Carr live and the cast and crew behind me, the three-headed Godzilla monster of John, of Jacob, us. and Brian. The summer of airline drama continues. This time, it's JetBlue. If you haven't heard, Minta and Cameron Burke were heading to Las Vegas from JFK on May 3rd to celebrate Minta's 40th birthday with their children when the airline kicked the entire family off the plane for storing a birthday cake in an overhead bin. I could not make this up. And an attendant asked Cameron to remove the cake, which he did, and another attendant allegedly berated him, telling him to leave the plane after he questioned whether she or he had been drinking. Port Authority police were called in, and the officer tells the family that it appears nothing is wrong, but the, the family would have to get off the plane because they needed to file a report. So everybody's got to get off the plane. Everybody. Family gets off the plane. Everybody else gets back on. That plane leaves. The fam family was refunded their money and booked on a United flight the next day. It's going for full circle. Wow. JetBlue spokesman Doug McGraw said, quote, the video circulating does not depict the entire incident and only starts after the objectionable behavior occurred and law enforcement called, end quote. Looking for a new way to get the hold baby on, to on. go to sleep? We haven't even looked at the video yet. We still got the video. Oh, we'll come well, back around we'll, to we'll it. We'll come back to it? Okay, that's fine. Looking for a new way to put the baby to sleep? Take a look at this. <laughs> Rube Goldbergian. Yes, you know, there's, you, you've got this KitchenAid mixer, what are you going to use it for, you know? How often do you use that thing? Well, here you go. I mean, that thing is going to town up here. <laughs> we had, uh, we had a, that I got at Toys R Us that works so well for our daughter, Gia, that I bought a second one uh, for the bedroom. So we had one downstairs in the living room and a second one up in the bedroom. It plugged into the uh, iPod or iPhone. Um, had built-in white noise sounds, that sort of thing. Nothing as inventive or as elaborate as that. That's, it's well done. It makes a little bit of a white noise behind it of the spinning, so it's, you know, calming. It's, it has a calming effect, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, Orlando firefighters made Sunday morning a great Mother's Day for a family of ducks. A woman saw a mother duck in a panic around a storm drain. She went over and saw the ducklings in the drain. <laughs> Firefighters say they removed a metal grate and used a ladder to go down and save two baby du ducklings. When reunited, mom and ducklings uh, wandered off into a nearby lake without saying so much as thank you. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, you know, a happy Mother's Day to that's uh, That's to presumed. Ducks. That's presumed. Oh, look at the ducks. Rich and compelling, now this. I don't think I'll ever be as cool as this kid is. That is the most chill bounce house kid I have ever seen. <laughs> oh, I mean, seriously. This is exactly how I remember my Grandpa Harris being attired for golf. <laughs> Slacks, golf shirt, cardigan, hair back, ready, ready to go. Yeah, to go. exactly. Wait till you see this car flip. Here's video showing some serious do it for the vine type danger. Whoop, oh boy. How close was that car? Flips, loses his balance, and just as a car goes by. Mm -hmm. you, that's why you should have a spotter. You're supposed to have a spotter, you put out a mat, maybe. Mm -hmm. A spotter. This is something that happens every day. Let's go again. <laughs> and the cargo bus. Woof. Uh, horsing around with a rubber chicken. This video speaks for itself. That that is a horse, and that is a rubber chicken. Why did the why did the horse cross the road? <laughs> <laughs> I 
this is what happens when you let Paris Hilton DJ your nightclub. <laughs> Actually, the joke is on us. Do you know how much Paris Hilton makes DJing? She's a DJ? She's a DJ. Oh. Paris Hilton makes something like $365,000 an hour DJing. This horse ought to be paid more. Wilbur, come in the room. You guys know that Paris Hilton is, is on the comeback, right? I think it was uh, Vanity Fair I was just looking at. All the, the kids today, the millennials, suddenly think everything about the early aughts is hot. To use Paris Hilton's uh, trademarked phrase, yes, she trademarked that. That's hot. She trademarked that. Can you so trademark she's just been, that? She's kind of just been laying low for a while, mm -hmm. and now she's like poised for like this huge millennial fueled comeback as like being the matriarch of being an internet celeb. I'm just telling you. Mm -hmm. uh, two year old Corbin Jackson kicked a tiny soccer ball to perfectly blow out a candle on a cupcake. Uh, I was going to send this to you, and then I looked at it several times and decided, eh, I'm not too sure about that. I, it's it's so quick, um, and we, we, we There's went There's something through. weird about the way that it, I don't know. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying it's fake, I'm just... Here's what, what we had looked at, is that it seems like his family puts these videos together quite a lot. And that probably took, uh, you know, a hundred takes before it finally happened just that well. So are we assuming that his, if this is mom, or maybe, I don't know, a relative, that, that playing around in open flame, like there's, like just out of camera range, there's an adult there? I, there's got to be another adult sitting there. We saw one video where he's throwing uh, ping pong balls in a cup. And I mean, just one after another after another, and then finally one of them makes it in. I'm guessing that they have him sit there and do this a couple hundred times, and then one of them works, and then they post it. Um, but it does; it looks real. But I'm just assuming that it wasn't uh, wasn't on the first try. Okay, let's uh, t uh, hear a word from our sponsor uh, via SNL. This is for the Amazon Echo Silver. Amazon Echo has everyone asking Alexa for help. Alyssa, what time is it? What the hell is wrong with this blasted thing? Amanda! But the latest technology isn't always easy to use for people of a certain age. These kids have bought me a busted machine again. Oh, yes, sir! That's why Amazon partnered with AARP to present the new Amazon Echo Silver, the only smart speaker device designed specifically to be used by the greatest generation. It's super loud and responds to any name even remotely close to Alexa, so they can find out the weather. Allegra, what is the weather outside? It is 74 degrees and sunny. Huh? It is 74 degrees and sunny. Where? Outside. What about it? The temperature outside is 74 degrees and sunny. I don't know about that. The latest in sports. Clarissa, how many did old Satchel strike out last night? Satchel Paige died in 1982. How many he get? Satchel Paige is dead. He what now? Died. Who did? Satchel Paige. Oh. I don't know about that. Even local news and pop culture. Manita. What them boys up to across the street? They are just playing. They what now? They are just playing. You say they just playing now? Yes, they are just playing. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's a smart devices like your thermostat. Alessandra, turn the heat up. The room is already 100 degrees. <laughs> are you trying to kill me, Alize? The new Amazon Echo Silver plays all the music they loved when they were young. Angela, play black jazz. Playing, uh, jazz. It also has a quick scan feature to help them find things. Emilia, where did I put the phone? The phone is in your right hand. <laughs> and it has an uh-huh feature for long rambling stories. So then I gave him five dollars, and he said I only gave him one dollar. Uh-huh. I said, I know I gave you a five. Uh-huh. Because I only had a five and a one only. Uh-huh. And this is the one dollar right here. Uh-huh. So, I mean, you tell me who's crazy. Amazon Echo Silver. Get yours today. I said get yours today. To order Amazon Echo Silver. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, my goodness. Did I laugh and laugh watching that live on Saturday night. I even tweeted out that I wanted one of those. Who wouldn't want an Amazon Echo Silver? I mean, it's got that wood grain. and uh... It's 120 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, a 101-year-old D-Day veteran has broken the world record for the oldest tandem skydiver. The record took place uh, in southwest England. The vet... Verdun Hayes is a great-grandfather. Four generations of his family were there to witness the jump, and some jumped with him. There he is, 101 years young. 101 and 38 days. Uh, the prior record was, what, what was it, 101 and three days? So Patty just spit her tea out on that last story with the Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him go. Well, good luck to him um, as he continues living. He said he hopes to still be skydiving when he's 102 and 103 years young. Nobody knows where North Korea is. The New York Times surveyed 1,700 American adults to see if they could point it out on a map. And, well, it predictably went pretty badly. Uh, the blue dots show everyone's guesses. In the end, only 36% of people could correctly say where North Korea was on a map. Speaking of that country, they successfully launched a mid- to long-range missile on Sunday, indicating a significant advance in its drive for an intercontinental ballistic missile, a worrying sign for the Korean Peninsula and for the United States. North Korea boasted uh, that Sunday's launch, supervised by Kim Jong-un, was aimed at verifying the capability to carry a, quote, large-scale heavy nuclear warhead, end quote. How about that? Mm -mm -mm. So now that, I mean, there could be missiles flying in the air, and we won't know where they're coming from because we don't know where North Korea is. Seventy-six percent of us don't, at least. Uh, getting back to our top story, JetBlue uh, accusing the customers on a plane May 3rd, saying that they became agitated, cursing and yelling. No one's in any trouble, all right? They're so recording. That, that, has that since been resolved? Yes, it's on the floor. It's right here. It's right here. Right. 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 To recap, this is a showdown over a birthday cake, and whether it was placed in the proper storage, you know, overhead bin, which also had allegedly emergency equipment in it. There seems to be multiple flight attendants involved. One possibly contradicted the other after these uh, these family members thought that a 40-year-old birthday cake, well, birthday cake celebrating somebody's 40th birthday, um, they thought they had placed it properly. And then another flight attendant uh, became involved and before the camera went on there was allegedly some cursing kind of a he said she said back and forth so the police were called this is in new york jfk this entire family and the entire plane ordered off the plane the family off to the side everybody gets back on and this family later refunded and rebooked on United. All over his birthday cake. Sure, no problem. Unfortunately, you know, it got reported to us. No one did anything wrong, okay? No problem. Right? Everyone's going to be okay. And they're just going to, unfortunately, you know, they're going to have to rebook everyone. And that's... Rebook everyone? And this is what we're, we're trying to avoid that. We wish we... This is Jet Blue? Jet right? Blue. So Jet Blue. Wow. Here you go. Right? Thank you. No one's in any... Nobody. You're okay, all right? Don't cry. It's all right. Thank you, Officer Chen. What's your name, Chen? Harry Hold on. Hold. Everyone stay seated, okay? Everyone just stay seated, Thank okay? Thank you very much. Everything's going to be okay. Thank you. Don't worry. You'll be all right. Did you guys see the cover of The New Yorker? No. With uh, the president and Jeff Sessions in the role of security dragging James Comey off an airplane in the matter of Dr. Dow? No, I didn't see that. It's on the cover of the New York. I, mean, I think you could probably look it up. Can you yeah, Google it? So just another, uh, another airline controversy. And JetBlue is saying that this only shows the second half of it, and that these customers right. were agitated and cursing. But you know what? 
we've seen lies from the airline companies before on that type of thing, putting out a statement that's just not exactly correct. Uh, it's just too bad. You see these kids crying, the ones saying how scared she is. Um, it's just no way to treat people, I guess. Debbie Arnold Beers says that she saw the cover of The New Yorker that depicts uh, oh, former FBI it. director James Comey in the role of Dr. Dow from the first and most infamous United incident. Uh, there you see Jeff Sessions in the role of law enforcement dragging uh, Comey's Dr. Dow off the airplane with uh, Trump sort of looming in the background. Mm -hmm. Combining two recent events into one. Interesting take on uh, Jeff Sessions. Uh, he apparently had a memo, or wrote a memo, uh, regarding drug sentencing mm -hmm. and how they're going to roll it back to like the stiffer penalties of an earlier era. Oh, that's okay. Where possession of um, a, a supply or an amount of something like marijuana could end, land you in jail with hardened criminals for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just saw a study that uh, one million police hours uh, in England are wasted on the war on drugs and that they're looking to scale theirs back. What do you think? Do you think that um, the public seeming softening on its stance about marijuana, uh, do we need to go back to an earlier Reaganite sort of just say no war on drugs or does your average common citizen agree with sending somebody up the river for a long, long time with murderers and rapists and that sort of thing for a relatively minor drug crime? Uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this as uh, we look at the comments and uh, play both sides of the issue, really. Um, Sessions uh, apparently likened marijuana to heroin. Um, <laughs> in extolling his, uh, his reasons for wanting to go back to a, a you know, stiffer penalty phase in our war on drugs. Um, do you agree with that? Do you think that, um, that he's sort of uh, behind the times or are you looking to go back uh, and step away from a progressive era and return to a more uh, hardline conservative era? What do you have to say? Just legalize it already, says Jim Felton. Safer than alcohol. Uh, why does it matter? Oh, okay, so that one is regarding the airline. Now, Linda's asking about the cake. Why would, why would you? Uh, they were allowed to bring on cakes. JetBlue, most of the airlines allow it. Um, apparently, apparently, this was I mean, like it's a, from a nice cake place out in New York or in New Jersey that they wanted sure, to Sure, I mean, to, to the thing members. about a wedding. Yeah. I mean, this is a 40th birthday. You want the cake from your favorite, you know, confectionery or bakery or whatever the case may be. I could see it. Um, can we show the baby sleeper one more time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we know where this is from? I don't, no. Is there sound with it? No, no sound. No sound, just... A sleeping, how old is that baby? Probably about six months old, maybe less. Um, being rocked to sleep. Probably a lot younger than six months, being that this is one of those, uh, they grow so fast. They grow out of these and boom, they're in the extra saucer and then they're out of the extra saucer and they're running around the room. This is a good uh, use of your kitchen aid. You know you're not using it. It's been sitting in that cupboard for how long? Jim Felton calls this redneck ingenuity. Mm. Or, or, or an engineer, somebody, um, you know, urban, uh, urbane, sophisticated, educated um, enough to do the. Well, I mean, these kitchen aids aren't cheap. No, that right there is yeah, like $270, a, isn't it? I thought it was a lot more than that. Isn't it? Okay, here we go. I, I'm not sure. I, it's been a while. I haven't been watching the prices right lately. Uh, so my, my pricing of consumer goods is not up to date. <laughs> KitchenAid. Rosalinda says they'd rather poison us with addictive, ex expensive pharmaceuticals than let us use a plant that it's impossible to overdose on. It's about money. Well, there is, oh boy, you want to talk about opening a can of worms. There's the whole for-profit prison system uh, and then the 
keeping those prisons full, stocked with uh, offenders, so to speak. Tammy's relaxed just watching this video of the baby. Actually, you hit the, the nails right on the head. It's, it's like, yeah, 250 bucks. Oh, so just, it was only $20 hours over? I wouldn't but... have won it then. <laughs> Where did you find it for $250? Uh, Amazon. So Helen thinks $300, Melissa thinks $400. Somebody on here said, I think it was Faith, said that she likes watching us. She's per, um, just hanging out with us in the morning. I'm seeing some for a little more. I mean, there's ones where they've got glass bowls and they've got different attachments for it and stuff, so and different colors. So I'm sure they, you can spend a lot more on them. Mary says it depends on the model. Mm -hmm. Denise wants to know, whatever happened to hiding, hiding, holding your child, giving a comfort and security and rocking your baby to sleep as opposed to doing this? I think the, wasn't the idea here just to get views? I mean, probably, probably. This, I, I wouldn't suspect that this, this is a legitimate way that they rock the baby. My now, um, not quite uh, six and a half years old, but closing in on that mark fast, um, Gia, when she was a baby, I used to have to rock her over the kitchen sink with the water running. That's the only way for a certain time span in her life, certain phase, that I could get her to go to sleep. To hear water running? Is that not that not any water. I tried different sinks, and I tried to, I, I tried a white <laughs> noise. It was app. only one sink. It was only the kitchen sink, and I'd have to rock her like, like this, <laughs> right staying there right by the sink, and then she would finally fall asleep. Linda says, who takes a cake on a plane? Couldn't buy one where they were going or le eat leftovers before the trip? Well, Linda, I think we, uh, we were saying that, you know, for some people, you know, they want to take, like, like, it'd be like taking Sanders hot fudge with you on a plane. Mm -hmm. Kind of no different. Or a, a, a Sanders bumpy cake. Bumpy cake. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take a bumpy cake, maybe not ship it, but you're thinking to yourself, well, I could take it with me and just put it underneath the seat or put it up above. Um, I think that, you know... <laughs> Steve says new, yeah. <laughs> new sequel movie, Cakes on a Plane. <laughs> I am tired of these mu cakes, these cakes on this plane. Shanna <laughs> uh, says the stricter drug law will only put more minorities and poor people in prison just like it did the first time. There's certainly a lot of research on that. The... Um, long-term imprisonment of an entire generation. Well, the smart thing to do right now is probably to buy stock in private prisons. But you know, counterintuitively, the reason why the, uh, the makers of firearms are kind of up in arms at the moment, no pun intended, is because they're not selling as many guns because they don't have the threat of the other presidential candidate in office threatening mm -hmm. to take away their guns. So. The stockpiling that happened went away, and now the gun makers aren't selling as many guns because they're the not as worried about there. the mm -hmm. demand's not there because the public's not worried about having their guns taken away. Uh, I'm glad you put the asterisks there, Todd, because I don't actually say it. I do the Chevy Chase mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> self-censorship bit. Adam says, having five kids myself, I can understand the need to improvise at times. It's extremely difficult to take care of household chores or even have a moment to yourself. Um, I believe it was my brother-in-law's sister who coined the phrase uh, regarding the exorciser, the island of neglect. Because you can put a baby in an exorciser. You know what an exorciser is? No. No. The thing where they like sit in it's it. The they they thing? sit in it and they okay. can bounce up and down and yeah. it's got different things. They can spin around in it but remain in one place. Uh, yeah, the island of neglect will allow you to get some laundry done, do the dishes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and anybody who's ever had an exercise would probably laugh at the phrase island of neglect. <laughs> Heidi thinks they should have confiscated the cake if it was a problem. Not boot them off. Oh, what's what's this kid up to again? Can just, we take that full? Just jumping around. 
Okay, give me just a second here. I've I've got some music for this. Hang on. Do you think you can stall? Where did you find this video, by the way? The depths of the internet. The interweb depths? The interweb depths. Hang on, I'll get us there. Now, Irene's asking why we can't see both of us at the same time and how it's got to be hard on your neck. Uh, turn in your head. I agree. We, uh, we didn't get to design this the way this is set up. <laughs> it um, just sort of came to it be. It just kind of happened. But we're still, we're still, we're moving things around. We're evolving. We're putting you by the TV now, so it's a little different than before. Uh, little brewback. I'm, uh, I'm just a kid, just chilling out in this bounce house. Just a kid bouncing. Don't mind me. Super chill. I, he doesn't have any, uh, what, what, he had socks on? It would be nice if he had, like, some Argyle socks on, you know? He, he, he needs sock game? Mm -hmm. You're saying he needs a better sock game to be <laughs> so chill in a bounce house. Okay. Little Dave Brubeck to jump to there. Take five. Kathy Generalovich is heading back to the mitten. Where Safe was travels. She? Yeah, we could have played Jump Around by House of Pain. Sure, mm -hmm. that would have been a little on the nose, though. Mm -hmm. It was more of a cardigan sweatered, slick back hair kind of a, right? Yeah. It called for that. Debbie says, is that handsome toddler going for the Guinness Bounce record? Little Mr. Nonchalant, he's been dubbed. Can you take that full? Mm -hmm. Just goes on and on. Stay with us. Uh, coming up here in a few minutes, we're going to be live in the D on the TV with uh, Chuck, myself, and Tati. Today, Tati is going to be on the queue line. Oh, yeah? She's riding the queue line. All right. I haven't gotten a chance to ride it yet. It was, uh, it was briefly discussed in the Live in the D enclave upstairs this morning how long it would take for the public to reject the the Q line as a name and go with something more like the Q or I mean I, I still kind Monterey. of in the habit of calling Monterey. it M1 you know? huh? I'm still kind of in the habit of calling M1 because you wrote a bunch of articles for click so, on yeah, calling it the M1 rail M1 rail and then all of a sudden I got to call it Little Caesars Arena yeah not gonna happen right I'll take the rail I'll ta I'm gonna hit the Woodward tram any other you know anything else yeah <laughs> The other guys are kind of silent today. Yeah, yeah we're just chilling. Well, guys. We used up all our energy the last uh, two days of the week when we, you know, we were running this thing. John went on his little excursion. <laughs> yeah, what was your excursion? I went up uh, to Montreal for the weekend. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, did you <laughs> encounter any French Canadians? I mean, it's it's amazing. It really feels a lot like France there. Even just the way the city looks. It's an old city. It was founded in 1642. Um, but yeah, good time. Did you see any classic uh, Montreal Expos gear with the, with the M, with the red, white, and the blue, the French flag colors? Oh, yeah, 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 with the, the fleur de lis and yeah. that whole thing, yeah. Yeah, uh, I probably had poutine twice a day, the whole time. Twice a day? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Were they friendly over there in Montreal? Yeah, yeah. What else is going on here? on the interwebs. Poplarville, Mississippi checking in. Ooh. And Beck, what's going on in Poplarville? 
I'd like to know how somebody in Poplarville, Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, how does somebody in Poplarville find us? It's probably April the draft. We used to do this bit at the other place called Throw the Dart, which I always quite enjoyed. We would put up a giant foam map of the U.S. on an easel, take an actual dart from like a pub. <laughs> Wherever it landed, we would like call that chamber of commerce in that town and learn all about the town. Okay. So we should start this? I think we, we could, could probably, back? probably try doing it. Mm -hmm. Lord knows they're not doing it. <laughs> Or any of the other old bits or shtick. Um, yeah, we should uh, we should try throwing the dart one day and see where. Maybe we'll make it. Maybe we could do that at noon. We could put something like that together. That's a fun idea. Are we going to be able to turn around a foam map of the U.S.? No, on no. An okay, not today at noon. Just you know, one of these days at noon. Roberta says she remembers the dart, while Tammy says poutine is the best. Yeah. Oh, but Todd Coleman. Meridian, disagrees. Idaho. Checking in. We got Louisiana. Jim Felton's checking in from Louisiana. Did they really? I did not realize that. I was so busy doing TV, I didn't know that they were doing it on the radio, throwing the dart. Um, actually, you know what Drew and Mike did? I think that you're thinking of is they would do what they called the Harris Poll, mm -hmm. and they would open up a phone book and go to people name Harris and call them for their opinions on stuff. I you think know, that was a pretty good bet. And this was something that, that bothered me. when I, For the longest time, my dream, just like in The Jerk, was to be in the phone book, because then you're somebody. And <laughs> now, I don't, I don't have a house phone. I'm never going to be in the phone book. I feel like this is, I'm going to miss out on that dream. Yeah, you're not missing much. <laughs> <laughs> Being in the white pages, like in the physical print. Yeah. With my yeah. name and, and the phone number? Wow. 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 I'm in the phone book. I'm an actual person now. <laughs> Stephanie says, JC, you're nationwide in popularity. That's right. Like, in 10% in of the total number of states, I have one viewer. Mm -hmm. We have somebody in <laughs> Louisiana, somebody over here, nobody in Providence or uh, Hawaii. I don't recall anybody watching Hawaii, although we did have the marriage. Hawaii? Or was that was Mexico? That was Mexico. I think that was Mexico. Patty's not missing much of what? Halibut, please. Yeah, I would love some halibut. Adam is checking in from the Death Star. Well, that's novel. <laughs> Did you uh, know that I, my first cast of the season... With a night crawler and a hook, I brought up a pretty nice sized bass. Yeah? And then two worms later, actually three worms later on my fourth worm, I nailed another one. Really? Where'd you go fishing? Uh, my in laws' lake house. Okay. We were there for Mother's Day, and my daughter said, Daddy, Daddy, can you stop and get some night crawlers? Can we can get some worms? I said, Sure. So we had a dozen crawlers, and we ended up catching seven fish. Wow. Wow. Wow, seven fish. That's one more than six. Can you, uh, would it be easier for me to hold up my phone or should you go to my Instagram? Let's check it out. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to pull it up. Seven fish. Yeah, two bass and then the rest were like sunfish and bluegill. Mm hmm. Doug is checking in from the golf course. If you're out golfing, why in the world would you be watching this? Yeah, you're probably waiting for the next guy ahead of you. I Maybe mean, your tea time hasn't happened. Ooh, here we go. Um, look at that fish. Can you zoom or no? No, I don't, I don't know how to do that. I. Oh, hey, look, look at, at you. Jacob. Yeah. All right. First cast of the season. First cast of the season, and I brought up, and he, he they were hungry. Yeah? These fish, they then people started giving me grief about my shirt. Who goes fishing in an Oxford, you know? And, and the reason why is because I was dressed for Mother's Day and we were casting yeah. off the shore. You know what drives me crazy is I always see people fishing in camo, and I think, you're not fooling these fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Friday. Um, <laughs> a friend of mine, I said, uh, you want to hear a joke? 
He goes, yeah. I go, uh, so <laughs> two fish are in a tank. One says to the other, you man the guns, I'll drive. And he just kind of looked at me for a second. <laughs> and I said, two fish are in a tank. And, it went, and then he, he burst out laughing <laughs> and kept laughing. It's such a stealth joke. It's, it's a awesome. good joke. Yeah, it's a it quality, is a quality, quality one. joke, as told to me f first six <laughs> months ago by John. I had a T-shirt on underneath that, Walter. I was dressed up. No, I shouldn't say dressed up. I was dressed appropriately for Mother's Day. Hmm? I thought I heard something back there. Yeah, Jim says uh, down here they do everything in camo. Well, then you're you know, being stealthy. <laughs> Good morning, Irene Boggs. Um, Sorry, I gotta I gotta run. Got a little uh, TV show on on local four at 10 a.m. called Live in the D. I hope you check it out. All right, stay classy, Detroit. Jason Carr Live was sponsored by the Mike Moore's Law Firm, 855-MIKE-WINS.